Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. I'm Jessica Faust. And we are literary agents who have taken our popular blog to YouTube where we discuss all things publishing and finding an agent. Um, today we wanted to talk about what a writer might learn when they absolutely hate a book. <laughs> so Because it happens. It happens. I'm just going to say, everyone has had an experience probably within the last month or two where they've picked up a book, have hated said book, put book down and walked away completely. But I think there is something there. Like you probably have that feeling often you're like, am I the only one who hated this book? <laughs> you know what you can't learn? That publishing is terrible and doesn't publish anything good. That is not something you'll learn from that. Exactly. Which <laughs> a lot of people seem to think that is what they learn. <laughs> but, um, no, but we wanted to sort of talk about when you're reading that book, how can you read maybe like a publishing professional will to understand why that book is getting any interest or has made it to shelves, but you don't like it. Yeah, I think what's important to remember is somebody loved that book. Yeah. And it's not just the author. I mean, there was a whole team of people that along the way loved that book enough to publish it. There were probably also teams of people who did not love it and chose to pass on it. And that is the nature of working in a business that's subjective and based on art. And there's that's every day. <laughs> you know, in some ways, it's also kind of the magic of being in publishing. I say it all the time. Any like, book. Oh, sorry, we're delayed. No, go on. Uh, I was going to say, on. I say it all the time. Any book is lightning in a bottle, it feels like, because you are getting yeses from all of these different people. And one person in that wheel could just say, nope, don't want it. And then that's it. So it feels like every book sale is a lightning in a bottle book sale. Yeah. And, and no one was necessarily wrong. Right. Somebody was willing to take a chance and somebody else didn't love something enough to take a chance. And that's fair because if you're willing to take a chance, you like it enough to put a lot of work behind it. So if I hate the book, what then can I learn from that about all of this? Yeah. So I think that there are, I mean, we can break it down sort of by the elements of the book itself. Um, probably the most obvious is look at the way the book is packaged. That book is packaged that it's a vision that is 10, 20, 30 people's vision for what that book can, would, and is, would and be, by, and is. So and by package, we mean, um, what does the cover look like? Is it hardcover? Is it paperback? Um, what genre is it published in? What kind of title does it have? All of blurb. those things make, and yeah, the blurb on the back of the book, the quotes, who yep. did they approach to ask for quotes from? All of that is part of the package and then the vision of the book. Right. So then I think once you have sort of analyzed that and you decide that you understand what they were going for, then you can use that as an entry point. So like maybe you were reading a book as literary fiction and then you look at all the comps and all the quotes and everything like, oh, well, these people were actually more on the mystery side of things. So then were you just looking at it the wrong way? Was it something that you approached having some sort of hype because of those quotes and it just didn't live up to it? Like there's so much that you can glean from how this book was packaged and intended to reach you and how it actually did reach you. Yeah, and then I think when you look at the reading of the book itself and you know, you have to figure out why you hated it. Right. You know, did you hate it because you couldn't stand the writing? You know, I recently um, suffered great disappointment <laughs> um, from reading a book I was truly excited about because the book wasn't plot driven at all. It was really more of a character study, which I felt personally was kind of boring. But yet I could see all of the elements that made an agent and an editor fall in love with this book and get really excited about it. It just wasn't me. And for me, it's also analyzing like, okay, well, I looked at this book this way I didn't like it this way but I can see why they did so for me sometimes that goes to do I need to rethink the way I might look at the next submission that comes across my transom right or and then another way to put it is I mean and this can go both ways whether you love the book or you didn't did they do something with the writing is there a character development arc is there a plot point that they did that I did or didn't like that I should or shouldn't do right Right. And I, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, getting published is also about understanding the market. 
So you can get this great idea that you love and write the book, but if you have not made an effort to understand the market and what's selling in today's market and what readers, not just editors and agents, but what readers are buying, then you haven't done your job as a writer to be able to figure out how to become a published author. Right. And we say it all the time in terms of our job, what we're doing when we're revising with clients is we are anticipating how it's going to be rejected. And mm -hmm. we're trying to combat that while we're revising. So mm -hmm. the way that you can do that for a book that's on the shelves that you just picked up, whether you loved it or hated it, is go read the reviews. Read yeah. the five star, read the one star, read the three star, see what people loved, see what people hated, see what people were like, eh, this could have been better, or this was what I loved, this is what I didn't. And try and see how you can, you know, learn something and apply that to your own writing. Yeah, and it can also shift perspectives on where you think your writing belongs. Right. If you are finding that you consistently hate unreliable narrators, then probably writing psychological suspense in today's market is not the best thing for you. And this is particularly important, um, both in age group and children's literature. So if you're writing something with the themes and the tone of a middle grade, but you are aging your character in YA or vice versa, it can be helpful there. It can also be helpful in commercial upmarket literary on the adult side of things. Cause there are so many people like, yes, I write literary fiction and then they read literary fiction books and they hate them. <laughs> it's true. But maybe you're not writing and reading literary fiction. You're writing and reading upmarket or maybe even commercial. So wondering, um, what it is, like how this book was packaged can sort of help you define your own writing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that actually sometimes we can learn more from what we didn't like, yeah. because I know that when I don't like something, I will um, think about it more in the sense of why I didn't like it versus if I love something, I just loved it. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. When you love something, you're enjoying that all the way through. So you know exactly what's happening and exactly why you love it. But when you don't love it, it could just be something's not right here. Or And we were yeah. just talking about this in a private call where I said, I went straight to Goodreads once I finished it because I was on the <laughs> fence. I wasn't sure. And I needed somebody to tell me all the things I loved and all the things I hated. So I'd be like, that was really what it was. Somebody can articulate it. Yeah, well, and sometimes I just need reassurance. It wasn't just me. It was like, everybody loved this book and all the reviews. What's wrong with me? Oh, this one person on Goodreads also didn't like it. I feel better about myself. <laughs> right, but that's another thing too, because there's commercial and critical success. There's commercial success and there's critical success. So you'll True. see books that are lauded by critics, all the New York Times, starred reviews on every book club known to man. But is it really what everybody that you know is reading? Is it great on Goodreads? Is it a best sell? You know, like those sort of things are, they're quantifiable. So you want to try and boil down what exactly is going on there. Yeah. And listen, we have um, what can become intense conversations here at Bookends when one of us loves something that another one didn't, then it can get um, a fun and competitive because it really says a lot about us. I know what um, you're referring to, and I hate that book. I'm not going to <laughs> name that book, but we have a tally of who liked it and who didn't like I it. I liked it. Yeah, I did not. <laughs> but anyway, yes, we hope that was helpful. Whenever you're reading something, if you don't like it, ask yourself why. Sort of go through the checklist of what and about it made it great. Yeah, try to find out why, try to figure out why somebody else did, and, and, and it's okay. Yeah. You don't have to decide you like it and you don't have to decide you're wrong, but analyzing in this way can help you with your own writing. And if you're going to be in publishing, um, it's also one of those uh, rites of pass passage where you have to understand that people are going to hate something you love all the time. All the time. <laughs> so. Yeah, it doesn't always hurt less though. No. <laughs> well, we hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you back here next week. Bye.